Wake up, Shaple. Don't be like this little punk. Not only is your brain complicated as hell with 86 billion neurons doing neuron shit, but it's also incredibly fragile and mendable. Every day, you've got to deal with your conscious, subconscious, and all the Marys who try to tell you what to do. Today's topic is on herd mentality and the suppressed thoughts that impact our behavior. So pay attention if you don't want to get Manson family. It's my brain, so it's my rules. I'll stuff whatever Facebook facts I want in there. And why do I always have to be the one to take out the trash? Yeah, I know you work 86 hours a week at the children's hospital, but I'm busy too. Do you know how hard it is to get a Rocket League Twitch stream off the ground, Antasia? It's already a lot there. Sorry I don't have time to shower or call my sick dad. I gotta stay up all night scoring sweet goals and providing whimsical commentary. <sighs> so next time you try to, um... You know, kick me out of the house that you bought. <gasps> Remember that I'm not a sheep. A soft, fluffy, sleepy sheep. Hello. You have entered the fourth stage of your sleep cycle. Though it may seem like you've only been asleep for a second, You've been transiting into a deeper stage of sleep for the last 90 minutes. The moment you fell asleep, the ventrolateral preoptic nucleus in the hypothalamus and the parafacial zone in the brainstem began slowing your brain waves and relaxing your muscles. When these cells become active, it triggers a loss of consciousness as you move through the four stages of sleep. You are now in the rapid eye movement stage, or REM sleep. Your muscles are now paralyzed, and you will begin re-energizing your body's cells, clear waste from your brain, strengthen memory, regulate mood, appetite, libido, and also dream. You may now select the dream you wish to experience. There are three choices. One, cute puppy paradise. Two, super sexy adventure. Three, hellish nightmare. You've selected hellish nightmare. Good luck. <laughs> What was that? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the title of the video. While there is no universal definition of what a dream is, dreams consist of a series of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that occur in the brain during REM. Though your body lay paralyzed, your brain is highly active during this stage of sleep. You spend two hours each night dreaming, but will not remember all or a majority of them, which is pretty unfair if you ask us. You get to live an exciting double life every night only for men in black to sneak through your window like a deranged tooth fairy and erase your memories. Uh, metaphorically. The men in black don't really do this. They're too busy waterboarding E.T. for his secrets. Dreams consist of three elements. Periodic visuals, unrelated visual bursts, and emotional episodes. It's theorized that there are two kinds of visual imagery in dreams. One vivid, detailed, and colorful. These are like the classic dream of giving a speech in front of a large crowd and not remembering what you're supposed to say, and then you look down and realize you're not wearing any pants, and then everyone points and laughs at you, and then Brett, your mom's new boyfriend, rides in on his motorcycle and tells you, you suck, and he can't wait to go home and pork your mom, and then suddenly a pterodactyl flies through the window and bites off Brett's head and then turns to you and says, hop on, and then you get on its back and take off into the night sky. You hold on to the prehistoric bird's scaly mane as the world gets smaller and smaller below you. You feel the wind rush against your skin like your god's personal pinwheel, and for the first time in your life, you feel truly free. The other type of visual dreams feature unconstrained plots, kind of like the underwear dream, but more sporadic montage and less weird pterodactyl stuff. So that's the basic explanation of what dreams are. However, what good is an explanation of what something is if we're not sure what it does? Not every bodily function can be as easy to understand as the respiratory system. Look how simple this sucker is to follow. You can't just make a chart for how and why dreams work. Where would the pterodactyl attack go? Oneurology is the study of dreams, and amateur analogists have been theorizing and interpreting dreams for thousands of years. Records show that early civilizations like Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt viewed dreams as a bridge between the earthly world and a spiritual one. Ancient Greeks believed that dreams had prophetic powers. For a majority of modern humanity, dreams were connected to a spiritual purpose, 
Good old Freud flipped the notion to a psychology viewpoint in 1899 with his groundbreaking psychosexual erotica, The Interpretation of Dreams. Freud theorized that dreams served the purpose of wish fulfillment. He utilized dream interpretation in his psychotherapeutic process, believing that people maneuver through society repressing their desires, and when they dream, their subconscious takes over to act upon these repressions. Freud's dream theory was pivotal in shaping modern beliefs on the conscious mind. It also led to his theories on the Oedipus complex, which, to avoid a channel strike, it's better to be explained on a website that ends with hub. Many of Freud's theories have been disputed over the years, but his idea that dreams are entangled with one's consciousness and are influenced by repression still holds strong in many of today's most regarded theories for why we dream. The continuity hypothesis states that dreams reflect waking life experiences and the motions attached to these experiences continue to be processed as you sleep. Let's say you're walking down the street and you see an unattended baby holding a big tasty bag of candy. You like candy and babies are notoriously weak, so you snatch that bag out of its grubby little fingers and run away. However, the satisfaction of a gobstopper doesn't make up for the sounds of the crying infant that continuously plays through your head. You feel guilty and are anxious that you might get caught. When you go to sleep that night, these emotions don't slip away along with your awake experiencing consciousness. Instead, they fester with a new state of consciousness found in the REM. You could start dreaming that you're a little scared baby who had its candy stolen. Or you're in prison for crimes of candy addiction. Or perhaps you wake up in a cold sweat not remembering your dream, but still feeling a gut punch of guilt. Our brains aren't a ruthless Jiminy Cricket type consciousness that kicks us when we're down. In fact, the opposite is true. Neuroscientists out of Berkeley theorize that our brains continue to process emotions in REM sleep to recalibrate the sensitivity of our brain to said emotional burden. The Berkeley researchers' findings suggest that dreams help us process emotions by encoding and constructing memories from them. The fantastical scenes in our dreams might not be real, but the emotions attached to them are. Thus, our brains attempt to strip them of a certain experience by creating a memory out of it. This way, the emotion is no longer as active, and by not repressing the feeling and making ourselves process it, we are decreasing the stress and anxiety we have towards it. So, don't feel bad about your baby robbery. Just sleep on it. As nice as it is to imagine that our brains look out for us and our dreams are a conscious car wash, not all researchers agree with this sentiment. We call this next dream theory the not-so-fun, but hey, no one really knows what exactly is going on yet because brains are extremely complicated, so we need to keep the simple explanation into consideration, even though it's boring theory. Researchers believe that dreams, like everything else we see, imagine, and think, are linked to neural responses in the brain. Neural activity in the primary sensory areas of the neocortex produces the impression of sensory perceptions. Some neuroscientists believe that dreams are without purpose and are the product of neural responses staying active while we sleep. While we build our memory of the day's events, our neural responses fire at random and the perceptions created are merely fragmented multisensory hallucinations that we then attempt to make sense of by subconsciously filling in the gaps to create a story we call a dream. So with these beliefs, our brain isn't our best bud who stays up to help us overcome our insecurities, but instead, it's our out-of-control roommate that trips major balls every night after we go to sleep. An evolutionary psychologist may challenge the idea of meaningless dreams with a threat simulation theory. They believe that dream consciousness is an ancient biological defense mechanism with the evolutionary purpose being to repeatedly simulate threatening events. This theory can explain why other mammals experience dreaming, as threat simulations rehearse and enhance the neurocognitive mechanisms needed for threat perception and avoidance. You might think it's cute when Scruffy frantically kicks his legs while he sleeps, but in his head, a giant prehistoric cave bear is about to eat him. So please cut him some slack and let him eat one thing of his choosing from your fridge. It is hypothesized that threatening real-life encounters leads to an increased frequency and severity of events in dreams. It can be as simple as having a nightmare about forgetting your words and your pants a few days before you have to give a speech. Or it can be more irrational, like staying up late to watch a zombie movie and then having a vivid dream about the apocalypse. 
Evidence for this theory comes from a large portion of dreams that include a life-threatening situation. In some studies, it was more than 70%, which is significantly higher than the incidence of threats in one's daily life. In the midst of the other 30%, sexual dreams that are often experienced also fits the threat simulation theory, as the importance of reproduction is critical for a species to survive. So, what is a dream? Is it our connection to a spirit world? A mind trick that allows us to act upon our urges? A subconscious tool to control our emotions? A hallucination slideshow? A training ground for the outside world? Or is it something different we haven't discovered yet? It could be a combination of aspects from all the above. There's still a lot to learn about our brains, so we can't expect to know all the answers to our most abstract daily experience. But what we can take comfort in is knowing that we aren't sleeping a third of our lives away. We're just experiencing being alive in a different way that for some reason we have a really hard time remembering. So maybe then nightmares aren't so bad. They could be making us better in ways it's hard to comprehend, but ways that are essential for us to grow. And perhaps Freud's mom kink is because he really, really, really cares about the survival of our species. No matter what goes on in our beautifully complex brains. Just remember, if Scruffy can do it, well, by golly, so can you. Chick, are you coming to bed? Yes, dear. I'm on my way. Sleep tight. You're in for a wild night. <laughs>